Good morning, I'm Terry and welcome to Tartar Spider. It's a rainy groundhog day here, so let's look at the letter I in Doctor Who. And if you enjoy this video, please like, please subscribe, leave a comment. And now, the letter I in Doctor Who. Ian Chesterton, from an unearthly child through the chase. Ian is a science teacher at Coal Hill School. He and Barbara Wright became the first doctor's unwilling companions when they forced entry into the TARDIS in search of Susan Foreman. After journeys into the past, future, and other worlds, during which Ian was knighted by Richard the Lionheart, Ian and Barbara would return to their own time and world in a Dalek time machine. The Ice Warriors, various stories in both classic and new Doctor Who. From the red planet Mars, the Ice Warriors are a powerful race of reptilian humanoid warriors. Several times they have attempted to invade the Earth, only to be stopped by the Doctor. The greatest weakness of the Ice Warriors is heat, which causes shortness of breath and eventually death. Very seldom will an Ice Warrior leave their armor. In the television series, we have seen warriors, Ice Lords, and an Ice Warrior Queen. Idris from The Doctor's Wife Idris is the humanoid host for the TARDIS. Before Idris is filled with the soul or matrix of the Doctor's TARDIS, she is a patchwork person who lives on the sentient asteroid House. Her only companions are two other patchwork people, a nephew, a green-eyed Ood, who will empty her mind and replace it with the TARDIS. Her future is very short, and she will die when the TARDIS is made whole again. Inferno, from the third Doctor story, Inferno. A project to drill through the Earth's core to extract a new energy source, Stallman gas. Instead, the drilling released a green fluid, which mutated anyone coming in contact with it, turning them into primords. While attempting to repair the TARDIS console, the third doctor was transported to a parallel world days ahead of our own Earth, where disaster from the drilling was happening. Interminer from the story Carnival of Monsters. Interminer is an isolationist planet that had only recently opened up to other worlds. Vorg and Sherna would arrive, broke, but with their miniscope containing miniaturized alien species, including the Doctor, Joe Grant, and the Drashigs. International Electromax, from the story The Invasion. This computer and electronics company had a virtual worldwide monopoly on electronics. Its managing director, Tobias Vaughn, was in league with the Cybermen. They would use a radio signal activated in all international Electromax equipment that would produce a hypnotic effect of global proportions. The doctor and unit would thwart their plans. Iron Gron, from the story The Time Warrior. Iron Gron is a shabby medieval robber baron. He thought he could use the toad-faced Santarn lynx to overtake the neighboring castles. Lynx would promise him wondrous weapons in trade for shelter and help. Upon learning Lynx was leaving and that his ship would destroy his castle, he would attack Lynx, only to be gunned down by the Santarn. Ironsides, from the story Victory of the Daleks. In the midst of the Blitz, Britain is on the brink of despair, but Professor Bracewell offers hope. His iron-sized robot has greater firepower than any other man-made weapon. Destructive and obedient, they are the perfect soldier and servant. But the doctor sees the dark secrets. The Ironsides are really Daleks, the most hateful and dangerous creatures known to all. Islir, from the story The Curse of Baladin. An ice warrior, warlord, and ambassador to Peladon, he would help the Doctor uncover the conspiracy to prevent Peladon's entry into the Federation. 
And for our recommendation this week, let's return to the Republic of Doyle. I have made it to near the end of the fourth season. I like this show. It is more drama than detective, but I am enjoying it very much. So enjoy the Republic of Doyle on the Acorn streaming service. And enjoy your journey through time and space. And please never, ever forget, a child cannot have a favorite book if they do not have one. Give a child a book today. Good night, and I will speak to all of you again soon.